Hello and welcome to the video. In this video, it's all about how to set up a flying wing model for you quadcopter pilots. Now, for those of you that have come into the hobby and you're flying quadcopters, you'll know that not only do you end up with usually more than one quad, because these things seem to multiply when you're not looking, uh, but you'll also find that you have invested in the majority of the expensive stuff you already bought the radio, the goggles, the batteries, the charger, you've already got all those different pieces. And I talked in this video a couple of weeks ago about the other things that quadcopter pilots can get into and have an awful lot of fun with. And one of the ones that seems to get the most traction and be the most fun, and it's also one of the cheapest as well, is to start with flying wings. So in this video, what I'm going to do is go through and set up a flying wing and aim it specifically at you quadcopter pilots. If you have already done some bits and pieces with flying wings, then I have a complete couple of series on the channel. There's a simple wing setup, there's simple and complex plane setup videos, all with OpenTX that kind of take you through each of the individual steps. But I'm making this video for all of those pilots that have been in touch following that video and say, oh, wings are something I'm interested in, but I'm not sure what the differences are and how to do all the setup. But before we get into setting up radios, plugging in receivers, talking about the power system and tips and tricks for OpenTX with things like fixed wing, um, it's worthwhile spending a little bit of time talking about how planes actually fly. Now, apologies for those of you that understand all this already. But what I found is talking to a lot of quad pilots that have just been doing quad, they are used to the terminology as it applies to things like beta flight and quadcopters, but not as it applies to the broader scope. So let me just make sure that we have a common vocabulary. And then if I mention something in the video that you're not sure about, you've got this bit at the beginning that kind of explains it. So this isn't a flying wing. This is a plane. It's a little uh, baby Spitfire model. It's seen better days, uh, but it's small enough that I can hold it in front of the camera. Now, a traditional plane has a number of control surfaces and they correspond with the names of the controls on a radio that's used an awful lot with flying vehicles. The first set is these ones here at the back of the wing. These are called ailerons. And in response to the movement of these control surfaces, the craft will roll. So on the radio, you'll sometimes see the control called aileron, you'll sometimes see it called roll. So that's what the aileron is doing. On the back of the plane, there are two more control surfaces. The first one is the horizontal one called the elevator, and that gives you pitch. So elevator also makes the nose go up and down called pitch. So we've got aileron for roll, elevator for pitch, and the last control is the rudder at the back. And that gives you yaw, that makes the model turn left and right. And that's pretty similar to all the quadcoptery stuff that you're probably already very familiar with. Now in a flying wing, of course, you don't have the whole tail section, you just have like a flying V shape. And in that situation, what we need to do is we need to have that single set of control surfaces at the back of each of those wings, just one control surface actually performing two functions. It needs to perform the function of the ailerons to give us roll, and it needs to perform the function of the elevator to give us pitch as well. And combined, it allows us to fly around. Now, the lack of a rudder isn't a problem because to turn, what you do is in fixed wing parlance, you yank and bank, which sounds rude, but it's not. All you do is you roll the aircraft and then pull the elevator back. And that is what actually makes you turn. So you don't need the rudder. You kind of forget about that whole thing. So now we've talked about some of those basics of how a uh, plane, the flying wing actually fly. Let's jump onto the radio before we do anything else and just go through a very quick, simple setup about how we're going to set this thing up, do the basics, and then we can go onto the plane and then have a look at how we're going to plug the receiver together and get all the servos working. So let me pull out an OpenTX radio. I'll set this up on my Tyrannus X9D+, Plus, uh, but it could be done on any of the OpenTX radios. I'm using this radio because it's probably one of the most common radios that I see at events with quadcopters. So let's just make a new model in preparation for setting everything up. And what I'm going to do is first of all, select a model memory. So we're going to go uh, menu 
and we're going to find a spare slot. Luckily, I've been giving away loads of stuff recently to Patreon, so I've got spaces for models that have disappeared. So it will uh, put it in 11, press and hold enter, create model, and one of the options that we're going to get is the ability to have a flying wing. So we're going to select that. It says, does your model have an engine? Uh, of course it does, it's not a glider. So we're going to press page. Um, how's it going to be set out? Just make note of this, which way around it is, which is channel three and which is channel two. And this is looking top down onto the model. So any model that only has two control surfaces is going to work this way. And these control surfaces, because they perform the action of both the elevators and the ailerons, they're funnily called elevons. So we'll say we're happy with that. Page through. Does it have a rudder? No. So we're going to enter. And then what we're going to do is just going to go through the standard setup. So we'll give it a name later. And what it's done is it's got the standard for inputs, throttle, elevator, aileron, and rudder. I would almost certainly add, because flying wings are naturally less stable than fixed wing craft, uh, they always want, to, they're very agile. I would probably just add a smidgen of exponential um, smidgen <laughs> if you're not used to wings I'll probably give them more than you think because um, if things like expo is set up in beta flight none of that is going to be done on uh, a flight controller for you you're gonna have to have it all here on the radio so just add in a nice chunk of expo I'd recommend 25 30 percent when you're starting out you might find that that feels really sluggish but that'll be fine and then if we page through, we can now see that we have a really weird output setup. So channel one is obviously the throttle. That's where we're going to plug the ESC in a moment when we go to the bench. But channels two and three have both the elevator and the aileron against it. And that's because what the radio is doing is mixing those two controls that I talked about, the elevator and aileron, into both of those servos to control those control surfaces. But you notice the elevator is uh, in the same direction and the aileron is different and that's because we want the elevator control surfaces to move in tandem and when with the aileron we want them to move in opposition because we want the roll so that's what that's about now the reason it's 50 and 50 and because normally if you're setting up something for beta flight you probably have this all set to 100 is that if you have maximum aileron deflection this is a mo2 radio so this is the my throttle over here aileron and elevator are over here if you have maximum deflection of both elevator and aileron that's going to give you 100 percent of the deflection of, of available on the control surface so that's why it's 50 and 50. now that to some people thinks that that's not going to be enough and surely that should be more and more but what that could mean is that if you have it more than 50 and 50 you can oversaturate say it was 80 and 80 if you had all of the elevator control input then you'd only have another 20 to do the other control and that not might be enough to do the correction that you need now a couple of other things i'll probably do on this uh, make sure that your fail safe is set up we'll come back to that in a minute also i would recommend putting a throttle cut on the radio uh, that's pretty straightforward here it is on the right hand side i'm um, just going to have a look at that video it just is handy so right where your arm switch would normally be set it up so when the switch is in the disarm position it overwrites channel one with a value of minus 100 and that means that it's always safe and as a quadcopter pilot you're probably used to making sure that that switch is in the disarm position and it's good to continue those great practices now now we've done that i would probably then go and bind it onto a receiver uh, now the receivers that we tend to use for quadcopters uh, tend to be little small dinky things. With planes, we need to be able to plug the servos and the speed controller in. Now, I tend to use things like this, the X4R, or similar ones that have multiple outputs. Now, this actually has four outputs, one of which is uh, SBUS. We're not going to use that. Because we only need three outputs, channel one, two, and three, this is going to be perfect. So let me bind this to radio, just like I would normally, D16 protocol, and then let's go down and grab the wing and start wiring everything up. 
So here we are on the table. We're going to put this into this model here. This is the ZOHD Dart XL. It only has two control surfaces, so it operates as exactly the same as a wing. And this is the same whether or not it's a 600 millimeter wing, a big thing, Kaipaina 2, whatever it is, or something like this. Now, we only have a small number of things that we have to connect up. You'll notice that there's three wires coming from the servo lead from the ESC. And because that is because the ESC is going to provide the five volts that everything needs to work. So there's no power distribution board needed, nothing else. By plugging the battery into the ESC, that's going to not only get the throttle signal from the receiver, from channel one when we plug it in, but it's also going to provide the five volts that will power the receiver. And that five volts is passed through to all the servos and everything else as well. Now, the trick that I use is I always pop in a little servo checker. This is an optional step. It's not mandatory by any stretch of the imagination. But I like to just make sure the servos are all OK and I've absolutely got the right uh, cable for each of the servos before I plug them into the receiver. And taking note of the channel and that little diagram that we saw a moment ago as we set the radio up itself, I'm just going to plug them in. So this is going to go into uh, channel three. In fact, I might be doing this wrong way around, but actually, you know what, this will work because I'll show you how to reverse the mixes in the radio so that everything is going to work the right way. Uh, this model is a little bit unusual it looks like it's got a redundant set of pins out into the wing that also have a cable so i'm just using the servo checker to find which is which so let me plug all of that in i don't plug the esc in initially if we we're going to plug it in i'll plug the esc into channel one now I'll plug the servos in but i'm not going to do that right now just because i don't really want to accidentally start the motor and make sure that the props are off for this so i'm going to power the receiver using a five volt battery eliminator circuit just plug it into one of the spare uh, outputs on the receiver i'm just get through the fail safe warning there we are we're connected and if i can move the controls apart from the noise of the servos you can see that they're not moving the right way so we're going to have to kind of work through this and change the direction in the mixes so that the control surfaces are working okay but don't worry about it sounds really complicated but it's actually really straightforward so i would personally start with the elevator so the idea is is if you pull the stick on the elevator down to the bottom of the radio both of those control surfaces should raise up now if one of them isn't raising up and that's fine all we have to do is just reverse the direction of that signal for the elevator. Now I've got one of mine that isn't working in the right direction. So I need to figure out which output that is plugged into on the receiver and then tab across into the mixes menu, find the elevator part of the mix on the output on the receiver and change the polarity. So if it's positive 50, go to negative 50 and vice versa. And the way it should be when you've got it all set up, if you pull the elevator control down, both of the elevators will rise and they will rise equally. So that's that bit done. Next bit is to do the aileron. Now the aileron again is going to move in opposition. So now I have to figure out which one isn't moving in the right direction. Now the aileron should rise with the model facing away from you, looking at it from behind. As you move the aileron from left to right on the radio, the control surface that's on the side that the stick is moving to should rise to meet the control. Now you can see here that that isn't happening. So again, I need to just check which one isn't moving in the right direction. Uh, and this is pretty typical. It just depends on the way the servos are connected, how the geometry works for the wing. Um, variably, when you put these things together, there's always at least one thing that's about wrong. But this is all part of the fun of OpenTX. And then it should look like this. When you pull the stick down, both the control surfaces move up for the elevator and going left to right with the aileron, the control surface that matches the direction of the travel of the aileron should pop up as well. And when we've got that done, then we know we are in a great place and ready for the next step. Last couple of things you need to do just to set the wing up. Uh, first of all is go into the servo output menu. Remember servos, uh, our outputs two and three are the ones that the servos are connected into. And if you need to adjust the 
sub trim position so that the control surfaces are in line with the wing you don't want them sticking up or down uh, you ideally want them completely flat and level so just go in and change that uh, once you've done that I would then go back into the fail safe and just reach set the fail safe for each of those new positions and then you've got the servos all set up the other thing to do is then configure the throttle, uh, put the throttle to the maximum position on the radio, then with everything all connected, plug the battery in, obviously without the propeller attached to your wing, and then immediately drop the throttle on the radio and that will calibrate the ESC. For those of you with uh, quadcopter experience, you'll be using D-Shot and you won't have had to worry about ESC calibration for a long time. Uh, in planes, that's absolutely still a standard thing. If you don't do it, it'll still work. You just don't have the same complete throttle range and it won't match exactly how your radio wants to work. Now you're almost ready to fly. Now, one big word of caution here is when you're putting the battery into your model and fitting anything else that you want on it, maybe a camera or other pieces, do double check that the center of gravity is spot on. Most planes in the manual will list where the center of gravity needs to be. Lots of models these days actually have small protuberances modeled into the foam on the underside of the wing and the idea is is with the battery in place and everything all ready to fly you should be able to put your fingertips onto those two little nubbins or whichever point the central gravity is supposed to be and the plane will balance. If it doesn't balance uh, then it is not going to fly very well indeed and in fact central gravity is kind of important in quadcopters but with all of the components being kind of smudged into the middle um, it's less of an issue if your battery is five or six millimeters one way or the other five or six millimeters in a plane can make all the difference for your central gravity most pilots if they're not sure about the central gravity will put the center of gravity very slightly forward or towards the nose of the plane because the adage is that a nose heavy plane will fly poorly a tail heavy plane will fly once and what that really means is that if the center of gravity is too far back then the plane will be a complete nightmare to handle and it'll end up smashing into the ground and I occasionally have put planes together where the center of gravity has been wrong on the model and I have had it tail heavy and it has been entertaining, let's put it that way. So once you've got your center of gravity set, then the next thing to do is do your maiden flight. I would recommend for the first flight, get one of your mates to throw it up. You want a reasonable amount of throttle. I would recommend about 70, 60, 70, 80% and then get your mate to give it a bloody big chuck into the sky and be ready to catch it on the control surface. Now what you'll find on your first flight is that the wing will want to bank or maybe pitch its nose up and down and you'll need to trim it. Now trimming again is something that you don't need to have to do if you are a quadcopter pilot. The only trimming you tend to do on the radio is to make sure that all the middle channel positions in things like beta flight or INAV or whatever settle on 1500. In a plane we are dealing with physical forces here so we're going to have to move the control surfaces to counteract any weird uncommanded movement that we're getting. So if we find that we need to hold the stick over to the right for the aileron for it to fly level then what you can do is you can move the trim which is by the side and that's what these things are on the radio. These are the trims that will dial in that correction so you can let go of the stick. First of all I tackle the one that's worse so if you find that the nose is always going up into the air and you have to push the elevator forwards away from you in order to bring the nose back down then I would use a little bit of elevator trim click it up and just keep clicking it and clicking it and clicking it until eventually the plane appears to be flying straight and level do the same for the aileron as well. That takes a little bit of time to uh, get used to. So for your first battery, I would just use it for trimming and making sure that everything is working okay. I wouldn't try lots and lots of aerobatics. I would just try and get it trimmed out. Once the trims are set, you can save those trims in the radio into the sub trim, which means those trims will go back to their middle position. I think that's quite a nice idea because it means if I ever come into the radio and I've actually knocked the trim um, and I'm not sure wh which way it was knocked, I can just pop it back into that middle position. And again, it gives you full range once more on those trims. 
So if you accidentally maybe position the battery a couple of millimeters different from where you had it last time, or you might be using a slightly heavier battery and you need to maybe have more up elevator, you have the ability to dial that in next time you go and fly. Last big tip is do check your fail safe and do checks every time you go out to the field to go and fly your new wing. I personally make sure that all the servos are working okay, that the direction of the elevator and aileron are fine, that my throttle cut is working okay, and I also check that I've got a full battery and that my fail safe is working too. You should be able to have the motor running, turn the radio off, and then the motor will stop and the control surfaces will return to a neutral position. And then if something nasty goes wrong, your wing isn't going to fly out of the field and out of your life. And hopefully that's interesting for those of you that are quadcopter pilots. If you have any more questions or things you'd like me to show or explain a new terminology that's more in line with what quadcopter pilots are used to, then please pop me a comment down below and I'll make another video. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.